1 Corinthians 15.4, the Apostle Paul says something that sounds a bit strange. He claims that Christ rose from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. One might wonder what scriptures could Paul possibly be referring to. To understand, we need to keep reading. We find a clue in 1 Corinthians 15.20 where Paul says that Jesus is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So what exactly did Paul have in mind here? Let's turn to Leviticus 23.9-11 and find out. It reads, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land that I am going to give you and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. To give a little background, after Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the First Fruits Festival celebrated the barley harvest, which happened before the wheat harvest. The barley harvest came in late March, early April. The wheat harvest happened around May. The second festival is connected to the Feast of Weeks, which is also known as Pentecost. In the Feast of First Fruits, God ordered the people of Israel to wave a sheaf of the first grain before reaping the barley harvest. The sheaf symbolized the whole crop. The first fruits were a sign of their faith that God would bless the rest of the harvest. According to Paul, Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection, being raised ahead of the general resurrection that would happen at the end of time. In the history of mankind, Jesus was the first person to be raised with a body that was not subject to decay or death. So in Paul and in the early church's mind, Jesus is therefore the sheaf that is way before the Lord, the first fruits of the harvest. Now here's where things get really interesting. According to Leviticus 23.11, the feast of the first fruits was supposed to happen the day after the Sabbath, which is right after Passover. Now think about it for just a second. That Sunday, when did Jesus die? On Passover. It seems like it's more than just a coincidence that Jesus just happened to be resurrected on the Sunday after Passover. Also in Mark's Gospel, Jesus says on three different occasions that he would rise again on the third day. If this was deliberate design on the part of the Gospel authors, they probably would have made more direct references to Jesus' resurrection resurrection, fulfilling the first fruits and not have been so subtle. There's also a further confirmation that the early church believed that Jesus was raised on Sunday. These early believers did something radical. They changed their primary day of worship from the Sabbath to the Lord's Day in celebration of the resurrection. We find out about this in several places in the New Testament. For example, in the book of Revelation, the Apostle John says that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Since no further explanation is given, it suggests that his readers were already familiar with what the Lord's Day was. A few decades after Jesus' death and resurrection, the Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthian Christians in the mid-50s AD telling them, On the first day of the week, each of you is to put aside something and store it up, as he may prosper, so that there will be no collecting when I come. It's taken for granted that the Corinthian Christians gathered on the first day of the week, and this practice dates back well before Paul wrote his letter to the Corinthians. We also read in Acts 27 that, On the first day of the week, they were gathered together to break bread. On this occasion, Paul was in Troas, which is a good distance from Corinth, being on the other side of the Aegean Sea. This shows that this was a practice of the early church and not just limited to Corinth. I could likewise provide a truckload of quotes from the early church fathers like Origen, Justin Martyr, Tertullian, Ignatius, to show that the Lord's Day was celebrated on Sunday. All these lines of evidence show that worship on the Lord's Day was both universal in the early Christian communities and established very early on. So either the early church picked the Feast of First Fruits on purpose as a resurrection day and crafted their narratives around it, or this was orchestrated by divine design. But again, the gospel authors make no direct references to it, and we know that Matthew and the other evangelists were very quick to show how Jesus fulfills the Old Testament. This goes against the literary design hypothesis. Also, I've argued on this channel at length that the Gospels repeatedly show themselves to be based on eyewitness testimony and were written by scrupulous men who demonstrated themselves to be trustworthy. See my playlist on the reliability of the Gospels for more details on that. We see that it makes sense that Paul would say that Jesus rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus fulfills the Feast of the First Fruits just as he fulfills the Feast of Passover, which you can find out more by watching this video at the end screen. This video was inspired by an article written by Dr. Jonathan McClatchy, which I'll also link down below in the description. Thanks for watching.